Hello and welcome back to the Beefy Tech channel. Today we're taking a look at the Intel Arc A770 by Acer. This one is their Predator model and it is one hell of a GPU. It looks like it's straight out of 2010 and I absolutely love the gunmetal design. Now we do have to see if there's any value proposition behind the GPU of this sort. It has 16 gigs of VRAM and overall performance should be around the 3060 Ti. I'm going to take a look and see if it performs consistently within games and if it's an actually viable option for the general user rather than just for enthusiasts. Before we get into any gaming benchmarks, it's good to take a look at the value proposition of the Predator Biofrost Intel Arc A70, A770, which is a mouthful to say as you can clearly tell by my struggle. But this GPU is priced at roughly 400 US dollars. In my local market, it was around 400 euro which kind of lines up. So despite the different currencies, it's priced roughly the same. But what is the competition for a GPU of this sort? What you're gonna find is that roughly a 3060 Ti, which by the way performs similarly, is 409 US dollars for the cheapest one I could find within Amazon. But AMD then brings the value proposition to a whole different level with their 16750 uh, XT which is 409, significantly faster than the 3060 Ti, and indeed also faster than the A770. There are not many scenarios where I could confidently recommend an A770 over a 6750 XT. The value is simply not there versus a GPU that is simply better in a lot of ways. Now yes, Intel has come a far way, and there's a good reason behind supporting a third GPU manufacturer despite it already being a very well-settled manufacturer. We want competition, but if you're somebody looking to build a PC and that's the end of it for you, you're not into the tech realm, you don't really care about the companies, you just want the best bang for buck, you're gonna have to go for a 6750XT or a 3060Ti if you're an Nvidia loyalist. So, while you're looking at these gaming benchmarks, do remember the 6750XT uh, is the better choice. No questions asked. It will have less VRAM. So that is a big advantage of the A770, because as a professional, you could actually benefit from AV1 that this has. You could benefit from... Six so, I did tweak the performance a bit, as you can see over here in the performance menu of the Intel R control. But there's no fan curve setting, there's no manual fan control at all. And apparently there's a way to turn it on, but... You know what, they don't deserve the extra credit given they didn't put in the effort to just have it here by default and it's a very key setting to have here, so I'm not gonna touch it. If the CPU, if the GPU gets hot, it gets hot, so be it. Now, one thing that's important to mention, most of the time you're not actually gonna be running this at its full wattage. And 250 watts is actually quite reasonable, but by default it was at like 220. And most of the time you're gonna see it like 160 to 200 anyway, so... The arc is actually quite effective at uh, not drawing too much power, but uh, a bit upsetting to not see that fan control over here. Immediately, I realized something is not right. Um, I think maybe my overclock did something, because if you look at that frame timeline, you can tell that there's micro stutters literally constantly. Now, there's so many of them, I don't actually feel them in game, to be honest with you, but that's not how a frame time graph is supposed to look. Jumping from 3 milliseconds to 9 absolutely constantly is not good for the GPU, and as you can see, the 1% lows are half of the actual FPS as a result. Let me quickly try, quickly put everything to default and uh, see if that fixes it. And the answer is no, that does not fix it, which is kind of scary. Uh, not only the performance is just not that spectacular for like the performance tier you, you'd think you'd be getting, it's just stuttery, and that's not a good experience at all. Now, I'm gonna try to see if there's any fixes for it quickly, and the simplest fix for this will be to just mess with the image scaling, because I don't think there's another solution, so let's try quality Intel XES, see if it helps. Makes the game look like an absolute potato, and it doesn't help at all. Let me see, maybe the 1% lows are better? No? The 1% lows are the same, and in fact, stuttering even more. Huh. That is definitely interesting. Not gonna lie, guys. Definitely interesting. Um, I'll try another one. Maybe that fixes it. Let's see. Uh, let's go with FSR 2.1. Let's do balanced. Did less of a potato. Mm, it's marginally smoother on the frame timeline. Like, the overall latency is a bit lower. I mean, the latency is overall lower because, well... The frame rate is just slightly higher as a result of AMD FSR. I know, um, this does not seem to be a good Call of Duty GPU. 
Just period. There's nothing more behind it. I, I can't recommend it like at all. Not even better than a 3060 because of the micro stutters. It's not something you want in a GPU, especially in a competitive game like this. Let me quickly reset the frame time graph. Yeah, no. You, you definitely don't want to be playing on this. So, uh, well, yeah, no. Warzone's a dud. A770 is definitely not made for Warzone. Let's see if this happens in any other games, though. And I assure you guys, by the way, I did update the drivers. Like, I quadruple-checked I updated the drivers, and I also quadruple-checked resizable bar is on. Anyway, let's move to the other games. While the first game we tested, Call of Duty, was definitely a rough showing for the A770, I have complete faith that after all their driver updates, Rainbow Six Siege will run beautifully. And the best way to test it is I'll just run the benchmark and I'll catch up with you towards the end of it. Just remember, the benchmark is essentially run at 1440p Ultra. Alright, so as we come towards the end of this benchmark, something very interesting happened. There was a single stutter in the benchmark and uh, that... That is the 0.1% lows you are seeing. I watched the entire way through and a singular stutter is what absolutely massacred those 0.1% lows. What's even more interesting is that it says the GPU load is not supported by the video card in the results. Other than the 0.1% lows where there was a singular stutter, the results are really good. So the 1% lows are actually strong for 180 FPS because as you can see, the minimum was 150, the max was 209 falls one so 180 average falls right in between that and it's pretty pretty well like supported actually by rainbow six siege that one stutter was a bit weird so clearly it still has that issue a little bit there but a much better showing than call of duty where it's constant micro stutters so i'm happy to see that next up we're taking a look at forza horizon 5 at 1440p ultra settings well extreme preset my bad <laughs> but yeah let's start the benchmark Alright, so as the Forza benchmark comes towards an end, I do want to talk about the results. So they are reasonable. Obviously, in a game like this with ray tracing and an extreme preset, you shouldn't be expecting, you know, <laughs> insane frame rates from what is essentially a mid-tier GPU, but it's still really good frame rates given it's 1440p extreme. And because of those 16 gigs of VRAM, you don't even have to worry about it. So as you can see, it's actually using 9 gigs of VRAM. If you're on a 3070, you essentially could not run it at all at these settings because you'd be VRAM bottlenecked, but with this GPU, that's not a problem. I do have to say the 0.1% lows are okay, and the 1% lows are okay, but I did see one stutter, yet again, just one throughout the benchmark. So keep in mind, with the previous two games, it wasn't entirely smooth, just a result of a singular stutter during the benchmark. Call of Duty, unfortunately, just didn't run that well, but these two were perfectly plausible and I personally wouldn't be too annoyed about it if it was like an occasional stutter every 2-3 minutes. So, I was about to move on to Dying Light 2 when uh, I realized something quite entertaining. Dying Light 2 does not even boot. It just goes to a black screen and stays there for minutes and nothing happens. As for why, I couldn't tell you because... Uh, I just ran a game on Steam, so it's definitely not Steam, it's just the Arc GPU not wanting to launch into Dying Light 2 for some odd reason, so uh, I don't know what to tell you guys. <laughs> We're watching a black screen together, and as you can see, if I move over it, it just says Dying Light 2 and inactive. I just updated the drivers again to make sure everything is fine. Uh, I mean, after I realized Dying Light 2 wasn't starting and it's still doing the same thing, so yeah. Um, Clearly, there's still a lot of kinks with the Intel Arc uh, drivers because uh, some games like Dying Light 2 just don't want to start for some reason. Uh, I couldn't tell you why. I'm not experienced enough with Intel Arc to know why an issue like that would occur. But uh, if I have that issue, then somebody that isn't experienced at all with GPUs will more than likely have that issue and have no way to fix it. I'm sure in a week or two, I'll figure out a way to fix most of the issues with the Arc A770. But that would apply to you too if you were to buy this GPU. You would most definitely encounter the issues I'm encountering because me, a tech nerd that spends a lot of time with uh, GPUs and stuff, is having issues with it. It means that you, my dear friend, just wanting to buy a GPU and enjoy it will also have issues with it. So please keep that in mind. Given Dying Light 2 literally didn't work, I decided to switch it up and go to CSGO. We're over here in my inventory and we're gonna go and just enjoy a normal team deathmatch and see how the A770 performs at essentially just 1440p ultra settings for this game or well, high settings, whatever it be, and hopefully it's pretty smooth. All right, we are here in CSGO at Ultra Settings. Now, uh, to be entirely honest with you, that frame timeline is a bit interesting, to say the least. I mean, now it's looking pretty smooth, but uh, I don't know. What can I tell you? 
Oh, this guy's having a fun one. Let me quickly give it a little... The performance is okay. Like, the 1% lows aren't spectacular by any means necessary in a game like CSGO, but for 1440p Ultra to be at, like, 260 averages, it's perfectly reasonable. I don't see any issues with that. And most people aren't going to be running CS at Ultra settings anyway. They're going to be running low settings or optimized settings or, you know, whatever it be. Oh, absolutely gunked him. But, uh, you know, CSGO performance is fine. I mean... I don't feel the stutters yet again, so these micro stutters that may be appearing on the frame timeline, I, I don't feel them personally, and now it looks pretty smooth actually, so that's probably why I don't feel them, but um, just be aware of that, because even CSGO can be a bit um, bad with the 1% lows, but overall the average frame rate is good and I don't have a problem with it, like uh, it's perfectly reasonable all things considered. Overall, I think they have some work to do on the drivers, even now after a year of release. Uh, sadly, it still does not feel like a finished product to me, and even if I was going to be paying more for a 3070, for, for example, and it had less VRAM, I could see reasons why I'd go for the 3070 just due to the consistency. But when things like the 6750 XT exist for $400, have 12 gigs of VRAM and perform more consistently and better in a lot more games, the only way I could recommend the A770 is if you're a professional who needs AV1, and or other specific, in, you know, like Intel features that are offered with this GPU. The 16 gigs of VRAM are nice, but it's not going to save its gaming performance if the 1% lows are not that good to begin with. So it's good that they went with providing 16 gigs of VRAM, and it's good that this GPU actually does compete with like a 3060 Ti more or less, but the consistency isn't enough for me, so it shouldn't be enough for you either. Beware if you buy this GPU. With that said, Thank you for listening, thank you for watching, and see you next time.